edition of Coffee and Conversation right here on Yachting International Radio. I am Ria. I am your host. And uh, this is in conjunction with Palma Yacht Crew. We are covering the Australia Bushfires 2020. Today, I have a special guest, uh, Patrick. How are you, Patrick? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. So you are from a town called Port Macquarie in New South Wales. Yeah, Port Macquarie. And you are actually, you're a yachty, and, and where are you actually right now? You're in the States, are you not? Yeah, yeah. So I'm on uh, East Coast. I'm in uh, West Palm Beach, based out of Rubber Beach Marina. So you're well away from the situation in Australia, but your family is still there. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, pretty much other side of the world, but I'm hearing all about it almost every day. So you're in touch every day with friends and family then? Yep, every day. So what is the word coming out of your hometown? What are your parents saying to you? I mean, I know that um, you're not sort of in the midst of the fire, but of course um, the air quality has been drastically affected in that area and other areas as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's sort of um, as bad as the fires can be, the air quality and the um, sort of the extra issues that arise from it um, can affect everyone just as badly. I mean, with the road closures, affect so much in the air quality. Um, I know that the AMBOs have also been as busy because the air quality is triggering so much more like respiratory problems, especially with um, elderly people and all that kind of thing. So it's kind of like a cascading effect when so all this other stuff starts happening and it just starts to get chaotic, um, you know, with these sort of major events like this. So uh, the town itself has been um, mostly unaffected by the fires themselves i mean if obviously a few properties have burnt down but um yes yeah, pretty much been surrounded by smoke and fire for a few weeks now now you used to be a member of the fire and rescue uh in new south wales for two yep. years yeah that's right have you noticed a change in the past say five years in regards to the length of the fire season um the amount of rain that you're getting, what are the changes that you've seen in the forest in that area? Mm -hmm. the, the fire season is definitely, it's, it's especially this year, it's jumped a little bit, but for the last few years, it's been creeping uh, both sides. So like we said, it's been, mostly the fire season has been mid to early summer. It sort of starts. Um, that's when it gets nice and hot and dry for the conditions but especially lately, it's been extending into the months around it. And so uh, that, that basically means that the backboning that we can do um, preventatively to stop the fires getting as bad as they have been in the summer, um, we can't do that. Like, well, they can't do that um, because the conditions aren't suited for it. So th it means that it, it, you can't... Um, the fires have just been getting out of control because it, all the all the burning has been happening at once. Well, I mean, realistically, fire is is growth. It it, it can you know it, it opens up sort of absolutely new ecosystems. There's plants that only grow after fire. Um, fire is just part of of natural existence. Um, yeah, that's but right. generally in the past, we have had, you know, I, I guess the history of the world, the, the history of the world is there's a fire and it just sort of burns itself and it's a small fire yeah. and it goes out. And But we humans have stopped those fires from happening. So yeah. the longer we stop them from happening, that means that when they finally do get a hold, we see a raging inferno like we see in Australia at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. So that's why these backfires are, these backburns, sorry, are essential to fire management in, in well, mm -hmm. any country that has the amount of forest that Australia does. Yes, exactly, yeah. But as dry. you said, as a result of the conditions of being so dry, it's been impossible, and the season lasting even longer, it's been impossible to do. Yeah, that's right. And, the, and, the, and it, it, it does build up because um, the amount of fuel load and kind of just... It, it, over a couple of years, um, the leaf litter will accumulate on the ground and it will just get so big that um, when a fire does go through, it's, it's, uh, it's devastating. So as a former fire and rescue, when you first get notified of a bushfire, what is the first steps that happen? Um, it depends on, it, it largely depends on the weather. So the fire is always going to go towards where the wind is blowing. Um, 
so we rely heavily on um, the weather predictions um, for the next few days. Uh, if it's blowing towards a pretty heavily populated area, things need to start moving and happening pretty quickly. Um, and a lot of things need to be deployed, um, aircraft, water bombing, um, lots of different stations. Um, the fires right now, because they're so huge, their fronts are so long um, that it's it's stretching the resources um, unbelievably. So they they're hard to they're hard to even combat um, because there's just so there's so much area to cover. Um, and when they are as big as they are, it's hard to control. Sort of. Um, they'll start spotting over and the front is, is quite large. So, and even if you get a wind change, the front will change. So it's, it sort of gives you an idea of how, of the, of the nature of the beast and how, how big it is to tackle. Um, and the, the main sort of victims, are the rural um, isolated little farms and properties outside of the main towns, because they don't have any access to water mains. So, we couldn't go to, um, like, we've got a family friend and he lives um, just outside the next town over, a, a town called Kempsey, and they've he's sort of in the valley there, and he isn't connected to water mains. He just has a dam that he uses for water for, for his property. And his, so we can't get, they wouldn't be able to get any firefighting trucks out there to be able to do property defence because they don't have access to mains i mean they could use the dam but it's it's uh it's not a lot of water so his only line of defense is if they water bomb um the front or he his basically his only option is to evacuate um and there's a lot of properties out there that um have to have to do this um they don't have any option to defend and it's it's hard because they have they basically have to evacuate but a lot of them want to stay to try and defend, but there's there's really nothing that they can do because, I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen the photos that you can't fight anything like this, even with even with hoses. Like you 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 can't. It's it's just uh, it's getting to the point where it's your your only option is to evacuate. So do they just use water or do they use fire retardant? Like I know I'm, I'm Canadian and I know in Canada when we fight forest fires because we have quite, quite, as, uh, quite large ones as well actually, but um, mm -hmm. there's like a red sort of fire retardant that they dump on the mountains when, when these types of forest fires are, are happening because they start to create their own weather patterns and that kind of thing. Do yeah. they use fire retardant the same in Australia? Yeah, uh, if I remember uh, we, we do have, um, it's like a foam. It just helps the water's firefighting capabilities. Um, it just enhances its ability to put out the fire. Um, yeah, the trucks do carry it. Um, we don't always use it, but um, most of the time it's used, absolutely. Well, and the other interesting thing, you know, it is a it's something to do with climate change for the simple fact that your fire season is getting longer, uh, conditions yeah. are getting drier. You don't know necessarily. I had a conversation the other day with uh, a gentleman from Tanzania, um, and, and he was sort of saying the, the same. They used to be able to move their animals um, according to, you know, they knew when the rainy season was, when, when the dry season was, and where they could take right. those animals, etc. And now that's straight out the window, straight across the board, straight across the world. And Wow. Canada as well, um, you know, we are seeing an increased um, fire season. We in the past would have our airplanes in Australia ready for the Australian fire season. Um, yep. And this year, because our fire season extended so long uh, throughout yep. British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, um, those planes stayed in Canada. Uh, yep. So they weren't there when these fires started in Australia. We weren't able to help. I mean, now, of course, Canada is sending troops over to, um, not troops, but firefighters over to help fight the fires. Mm -hmm. But in the past, we would have had those planes there already. So this is, climate change is affecting the world. It's not, you know, Absolutely. we're seeing it on a huge scale in Australia right now that is just unprecedented, but straight across the planet, everyone is affecting it. And, you know, we still have people saying that climate change doesn't exist. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's definitely raising a much bigger issue um, than the fires. I mean, they're, I would say that they're a, um, 
an effect of a greater cause, you know, it's, it's something that it's, I mean, they're, they're giving voice that a lot of people are realizing that the fires aren't, their fires are because of something greater that's happening. And we as humans, we are the ones that have, have made this happen. And we are also the ones that can fix the issue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Because it, it, I mean, it can't continue like it is. It's, um, I, I, I mean, I think I saw that Australia just deployed four thousand um, reservists in the in the military. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. In, in not in my life, anyway. But uh, to help with the evacuation, um, and I know that the air force is uh, transporting firefighters around Australia to help um, where the fires are. Like, I, I don't, I don't ever remember that happening. Um, and I don't think that has sort of happened for, for many years, not on the scale that it is now. So, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a problem that's going to get worse if, unless we, unless, like you said, we address it. Well, have you noticed a change in the yachting industry as a whole as well? I mean, I, I do know that myself watching things happen and, and, you know, working with the yachting industry as a whole, um, crew especially they've really started to come around to the idea that they really want to take care of the environment and take care of the planet and i think it's because it's a younger generation as well um but as being uh, in the united states do you find that that the crew there are sort of of the same mindset absolutely no you're you're 100 right um i've i've noticed a huge shift in uh in uh towards renewables um using less plastics especially on yachts using recycling and people really going out of their way to make sure that um, it's a much uh, greener, sort of cleaner use of all the materials that yachts use. Um, you're right. I, yeah, it could be a younger mindset kind of thing, but it's uh, definitely been a shift towards that, especially in all the forums and all the all the pages. People are always posting great alternatives to um, recyclables and that kind of thing. Um, but the fires as well, every time I've talked to, I mean, when I go down to, uh, Rabovich. Everyone is always like, as soon as they realize um, if you're from Australia, they'll always be very like, I'm so sorry. Like, I wish I, I, there's more that I could do to help other than donate and all this. I mean, so it is heartening to know that people are, are so willing to help um, and try and change for the better, whatever that change might be. So in space of how bad it is, um, it's good to know that there's so many people with such good hearts willing to help. It's a shame that it came to such a tragedy as what's happening in Australia for people to wake up and notice. Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've had Greta um, from Sweden and she's been, you know, everywhere and, and doing her climate change protests. And, you know, we've had so many people saying, Oh, put that, that kid back to school, etc." cetera. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> You know, I think until something like this happens, which is an absolute shame, the whole world kind of sits back. Now, the one thing that I see yeah. commenting on social media right now is when Notre Dame burnt down, within hours, there was billions there mm-hmm. that people were mm-hmm. donating in order to rebuild this church. Yes. Um, a lot of the complaints with some Australians and, and with people the world over is, you know, these fires started back in September. And here we are in January, and it's only now that we're starting to see people saying, wow, there is a problem and we need to start donating. And the money is starting to come in now. There's been some absolutely phenomenal donations um, just recently, I would say, in the past two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, how Do you know how the Australian people feel about the fact that it took a good four months before anybody really paid attention? Um, I can't. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about um i mean they it's it's definitely um it's definitely been building like it's sort of it's always sort of i've always sort of seen on the news like after a couple of headlines as bushfires are you know there's a bit about bushfires but only recently you're right it's been blown up as it has um i guess it's better late than never but they yeah. but they ha- they haven't been as bad as they have the last month i mean there's definitely been a lot of fires around but especially the last month, they've definitely escalated. Um, so, it, I mean, yeah, <laughs> we can only expect so much. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I think for the world stage, what really got it, there was a, that viral video that went, um, I mean, it, it went viral in a very, very short period of time of the woman um, that was saving the koala bear. And yes. I think that's really when the world media went, wait a minute, something's happening here. Um, I mean, the loss of animals has just been devastating. Wildlife has been devastating in Australia. And people are saying that there could be some species that are on the brink of extinction after this fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I remember reading some crazy statistics like, I think it was like one or two billion animals are, are perish in these fires, um, which is just unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> and the wildlife as well as the agricultural, Australia is a big agricultural um, country. We have a lot of livestock. Yeah. And uh, I think the, um, I don't know if you heard about the fires on Kangaroo Island. Yes. Uh, I think it's wiped out half of the, half of the, um, vegetation there and a couple of farmers i think i think it was twenty five thousand sheep as well that um died in those fires as well so it's a bigger it's a much greater impact than people losing their homes people are losing their livelihood um with their livestock and that's i mean the kind of effects that has um on the country uh we're probably going to be feeling for the next few years um and especially we, it, 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 we've got to help. We can't keep getting worse because it uh, just it affects so much more than you than you think. Other than just people losing their homes, it's such it's such a knock on effect, and it affects so much so many parts of our lives that um, it's it's uh, it's. It's not easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not easy. So it's, I mean, it's it's good that it's being such a talked about issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we're still learning about all the effects that it's having. Well, and I think too, at the end of the day, there was a, a story that I came across in regards to insurance. And because, as you said, the fire season has been getting longer and it has been getting more dangerous, um, the insurance costs have been going up. So they're you know, after the past few years, there there have been farm owners that can't actually afford to buy insurance. So these are people that not only lose their homes, their livestock, their living, their future, but they are uninsured. Really? Wow, I didn't know so, that. So, you know, it's 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 something that and I don't think it's just going to be for the next couple of years. I think it's going to be a lot longer than that before Australia is able to recover. Um, but on the other side of things, the Australian people are known as very rugged people and um, yeah. very uh, kind-hearted people. So I think as a community that I'm sure that you all will come together and, you know, pull through this like you pull through anything else that comes your way. Absolutely. So I wish you the best of luck, Patrick, and um, I thank you so much for coming on board. If you could keep us up to date on some of what your family and friends are going through back home, and uh, if there's anything you ever need from us here at Yachting International Radio, we are always open and willing to help you out. If there's any fundraisers in that area um, that you feel we need to uh, get the word out for, please do let us know. We'll make sure to get the word out there. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No, thank you for coming on. This has been Rhea covering the Australian Bushfires 2020 for Yachting International Radio and Palmer Yacht Crew. Tune in again.